Good morning. Wake up, HEC. Cris Oviedo here with you on this beautiful Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's August 31st. It's the last day of August. If you're watching this live on Facebook, thank you and welcome. If you're watching this as a rerun, Thank you for joining us too. We really appreciate you staying with us. And today I have a very special conversation. I have two guests joining me this morning. We're going to talk about sustainability. We're going to um, define what sustainability really is. is is one of those concepts that um, Google has different meanings for, right? And and I Google that this morning, and it says that. Sustainability is first the ability to be maintained at a certain rate or level, but it also says that is the avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain an ecological balance. So we are talking about ecology, we're talking about balance, and we're talking about maintenance, right? And we're gonna we're gonna understand what that means here in Howard County and here at Howard Community College. And my two guests, Bob Marietta, he is Howard Community College's environmental health and safety supervisor, who I I call, um, I guess with love, Green Bob. <laughs> Good morning, Bob. How are you? Good morning. Glad to be here. Glad to be here with you again. And we also have Elisa Resnick. And I forgot to ask you, and I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your last name right now, Elisa. So I'm going to ask you to correct me if I'm wrong. But she is Howard County Sustainability Projects Manager. And thank you for joining us this morning. It's very nice to meet you. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. It's, you know, it's the end of the month. There's a lot of excitement. There's a lot happening um, here at Howard Community College. We just restarted the fall semester. We're getting back into the swing of things. This morning, as I drove into HCC and I saw all of these cars, I was taken aback for a minute. I was like, oh, what's happening? What's different? And then I remembered students are back on campus. We're back in person. You know, we have classes offered in person online, hybrid. So there's many ways you can continue to further your, your education here at HCC. The other transition that comes with that is that we're going into a new season. We're going into the season of fall. And that brings changes. That brings adjustments. And, and I know that um, this past 18 months certainly brought us a lot of adjustments. And we're continuing to pivot. And we're continuing to, to change the ways that we do things. And Bob, that's what I want to start our conversation with today before we dive into our subject that's um if there was one thing right as we go into this transition back to in person uh, we go into this transition back into school what's one thing that maybe you would like everybody to keep in mind um to try to continue that i think that we've been talking and we've been seeing that more and more we're trying to be sustainable right so what's what's one thing that you would like as we transition into fall that people just keep in mind it fall we think of spring as being a time of renewal but fall is really the time where we can make an impact on that renewal. It's the time when we plant things. It's the time when we envision what things may look like come the spring. And so it's a time to just notice the world around you and see what's going on in the natural world and think about what you can do to be part of that instead of working against it, try and work with the natural uh, environment that's around you. Hmm. It's a beautiful uh, reflection, I think, as we go into fall, because I know that a lot of us, I, it, me, certainly, I, you know, the, the leaves fall, the, the, the trees look naked, they look dead. And, and we think that, you know, it's maybe we shouldn't be doing much. But you hear you're saying, let's take this time to prepare. Let's take this time to start doing some things so that when spring comes back and everything goes back into life, we are ready for that. So um, thank you for that message, Bob. Alisa, let's go to you because, um, you know, I it's the first time I've met you and I really appreciate you being with us this morning. And I always like to get to know my guests a little bit better. So that's the first question I have for you today is just tell us a little bit about, uh, about yourself, to a little bit about you. And what is it that you do at your work here at Howard County's Office of Sustainability? Okay, thanks. I'm Alyssa Reinick. I am a Howard County resident. I live here in Ellicott City. Um, I have been working with the Office of Community Sustainability for 11-ish years. I don't know. I have to count it. Um, so my background is in natural resources. I studied natural resources as an undergraduate, and then I, I followed that up by studying environmental planning. And here in the sustainability office, I really get to do all of that, which is a pretty interesting uh, 
place to be. Um, in my working career, I have worked at the federal level, the state level, and the local level. And I find that working at the local level at Howard County has been um, very satisfying. You really can implement projects from start to finish. So a um, bit of career advice, it's kind of nice to uh, move around a little bit and, and then settle into your, into your home. Um, in the Office of Community Sustainability, um, I work on a variety of projects. Uh, the goal of our office is to really um, insert sustainability into all of the county operations, but also to um, engage the public. So uh, we're very lucky in Howard County that we have such a supportive um, executive team. Uh, county executive Dr. Ball is very supportive of sustainability efforts, and that has really made our jobs very um, more fun to come to and and just you know pretty satisfying. So it's it's a good it's a group good group to be in. Um, the sustainability office is a, we're about a small group, about 10 of us. And um, we don't often, you know, do the on the ground work, but we work in policy. And as I said, we try to insert sustainability into other areas. So we we're real good at making partnerships, um, I work closely with Bob. We, uh, we try to make partnerships with nonprofit groups. We work with the other agencies. Um, yesterday, I was working very closely with recreation and parks and also with our communications team on a tree giveaway. So uh, we can dig into more things, but that's kind of the overview of me. Um, our office also has uh, different topics that we try to cover. We work on energy. We work on stormwater. Uh, we work on what we call ecosystem services. So um, trying to take care of the natural environment so the natural environment can help take care of us and also agriculture. So um, hopefully we can dive more into some of those things um, and what I'm working on day to day uh, if you're interested in that. And uh, But that's kind of the overview. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're, we're going to take a look at everything that, that you're doing, everything that the office is doing. But I want to establish a little more of that relationship. You said that you work with partners, that you work with the community. Um, I love what you said, taking care of the environment so that it can take care of us. And mm -hmm. I want I want to stop and think a little more about that. And and Bob, first, let's go with you and, and really, really talk about that relationship and the importance of that relationship of one the college working with county, but also the college making sure that we're taking care of that environment so that it can take care of us and so that the college and their students and our community can continue to be and thrive here in Howard County. But often people think of the college as existing only as a built environment, uh, only our buildings, uh, classrooms, uh, or what people first think about. But in order to get to those, you have to travel through the natural environs uh, that surround us. And it's those, the, the environments around us are what condition our air, for example, that's sucked into the buildings to provide uh, fresh air for our heating and ventilation systems. Um, the trees give us shade and, and cover our walkways so that it's comfortable to go outside, okay, in our areas. And they also protect us from things that we think of as being assaults uh, from the environment. The uh, trees and the plants that we put around help protect us from the heavy snowfalls and the heavy winds. And certainly we are very conscious about the storm water and doing our plantings and our uh, landscaping so that the buildings are protected um, from the uh, natural environments, the things that can happen. And uh, so they're all very closely tied together. And um, the county works with us quite a well, quite well and has actually funded some of the larger uh, landscaping projects that we have done on campus that help influence that stormwater. Things that come to mind are the uh, trees around our large stormwater pond, um, the uh, re restoring of one of our large streams uh, was undertaken by the county so that it uh, fl floods away from our area and doesn't damage our, our buildings and our parking lots, of course. Um, so there, there's a lot of collaboration that goes on uh, between uh, other nonprofits and with the county, okay, work, working here to keep the environment supporting us instead of something that we have to fight against. 
Alyssa, let's go back to that idea of taking care of our environment so that our environment can take care of us. How does that transpire? What does that look like when we're looking at Howard County and the initiatives that you guys are coming up with? And why is it important not that the county only does this, but the college and really everybody who is a Howard County citizen? Uh, yeah, and I mean, in my mind, you know, sustainability really has three three main prongs. We have the environment, and that's what our day to day operation is mostly um, doing. Uh, but also, the second prong would be health. Um, people's health is extremely important, and as we found out over COVID, um, you know, it's inextricably li linked to our economy, our well being, our mental health, um, and then the third prong being economy. So, you know everything is tied together in terms of taking care of the environment. If we don't do something about climate change, we're going to continue to have extreme weather. Um, we're going to continue to have more pandemics. We're going to continue to have energy issues where we, um, people have, you know, don't have electricity for long periods of time as the people in Louisiana are experiencing. So we really need to get upfront with all these issues. We, we need to take care of all of those issues so that we don't go through these, um, very dramatic and traumatic events where people have to, you know, put their lives back together. So I would say, you know, having these extreme events have really opened a lot of people's eyes to what we need to do to really take climate change head on so that it will take care of ourselves. I mean, people say, oh, save the planet. Well, the planet's going to be just fine without us. It's really about us. What do we want for our future? What do we want for our children? What do we want for our students? I mean, in climate change, we often talk about the year 2030 and then 2050. Well, some of the people that attend HCC are not going to be that old when 2050 rolls around. It seems like a long way away, but gosh, we really need to get our, our act together in terms of taking care of the environment so that we can continue to have this wonderful quality of life that we have in Howard County and that our most vulnerable people will not be so, you know, so affected. So, um, and I think something, you just said something that, that really uh, impacted you know, me. You, you said something yeah. that really okay. impacted me that, you know, you said the, 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 the planet's going to be fine. We, we don't need to save the planet. It's, it's our sustainability. It's our, our ability to live in this planet that we need to worry about. Um, and I mean, we saw it with COVID. The planet actually started thriving when we were in our homes. So they, you know, animals started really going around and enjoying everything. The sky was bluer and the green, the, the grass was greener, like <laughs> literally, you know, um, all around the world. So that, that's something that really speaks to me. And I think that it really shows us that what you just said is true. It's, it's, we need to care about our planet because we depend on our planet, but our planet does not depend on us. And, and COVID really gave us a, a, an idea of what that really looks like and, and how yeah. good it actually I mean, is for the planet. If we kind of like go back home and <laughs> stay in our little yeah, um, When we have there. less of an impact, the, the planet does do better. I mean, that's a little bit of an oversimplification that I just did. I mean, we certainly biodiversity, you know, more species are going extinct than probably ever before. And that's, uh, that's a human cause. So, you know, uh, it, it, there's some things we can do that to benefit the biodiversity and the animals and the you know, flora and the fauna as well. Um, you know, by, by making these dramatic changes in our atmosphere, we are definitely having an impact. So it's a little bit of an imp a simplification, but really sometimes it bugs me when environmental things are, per, you know, save the polar bears. Well, we got to look out for ourselves too. And polar bears doesn't resonate with everybody. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I really think it's important to bring it back home to what people's daily lives, people's health and their mental health. I mean, there can, there's a merging um, evidence and uh, science behind just that taking a walk in the woods is so good for your mental health. Um, in some countries and starting in the U.S., uh, doctors are trying are starting to prescribe that as a as a remedy for mental health. And uh, so not only can, you know, taking a hike or being outside impact your physical health, you know, just taking that walk and getting that fresh air is great, but um, can really improve your mental health. And I encourage everyone to take advantage of our wonderful parks we have. I mean, the HCC campus is beautiful itself. It's sometimes great to just get out of your your day to day of rushing around and, and take a break in nature. Highly recommend. Absolutely. Absolutely. The other the other, you know, speaking of impact and relationship, the other thing is, is um, 
the economic impact, right, that taking care of our environment has. And and I know that that's part of the definition uh, for your office. When, when you go into the Howard County Sustainability website, you're going to see that it's it's right there. It's on the definition that they have right there at the website. Help us unpack a little bit of that relationship because, um, um, like you just said, you know, there's, there's this um, intersections of mental health and the environment, economic health and the environment. Help us unpack a little bit more of that economic impact that taking care of our environment does and why it's important that we care about it and how it helps yeah. us and it helps our economy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and Bob knows this too. I mean, we've been talking about green jobs for a long time. And I feel like it's really, really coming true in a in a more tangible way than ever before. I mean, being a solar installer is an excellent job. Being a wind turbine engineer is and technician is an excellent job. Well paying, respected, um, interesting. These are great careers. Um, uh, HVAC, you know, making sure people have air conditioning. The more we have climate change, the more we have extreme heat, the more we're going to need these technicians to make sure that we have air conditioning in particular, uh, especially for our older residents. I really do worry about our vulnerable populations as we get, you know, we just keep breaking records over and over. Hottest this, hottest that, hottest month, hottest year. Um, you know, people are suffering. Uh, you know, our droughts and our hurricanes get a lot of attention, but I really do feel like heat is is the big problem. People with asthma, people who are older. And, and so, you know, anybody who can go into those green jobs, you're so needed and, the, and such good jobs. So there's direct economic impact there with the environmental uh, area per se. So there's that. And then also we have to look at our economic development in terms of our physical buildings. Um, as Bob mentioned earlier, like how are we doing our buildings? Are they as green as they can be? Are they as efficient as they can be? Because we, we just can't continue to use more and more and more resources. We really have to do the best and put our best brains towards making everything sustainable in our, in our economic development. We can't continue to just knock down trees and use up land. We have to do it in, a, in the smartest way that we can and really think about our impacts on our, our trees and our forests. So that's really what we're, our ultimate goal is um, to really think about these economic drivers that impact the environment and the uh, environmental things that impact the economy. Bob, let's talk about, you know, that that economic impact at here at Howard Community College. I know that we've had a conversation and we will have a future conversation again about, you know, the, the new building that we are in the process of um, bringing to HEC and all of the efforts that we're doing to really coexist and make this building as sustainable as possible, taking in consideration our environment, how to protect it, but at the same time, how to make this the best building that we can for our students. But let's talk about that, those career opportunities, right? All of those careers. Um, that we just heard about. How's HCC, how's how, that helping define or maybe even redefine HCC and, and how we're doing here things uh, for our students and, and how we are creating the new professionals here at Howard County? The, the most immediate impact is in our apprenticeship programs, uh, where with things like the solar installers, uh, the uh, HVAC uh, mechanics, uh, the integrated pest management uh, surveyors. It's it's touching more and more areas, and we ha you know have apprenticeship programs so that we can educate people to go right out and into those careers. But it goes way beyond that, and we need um, to get more and more of the green attitude into every profession, and so everybody can learn a little more about here, how their profession can operate. We hear about green nurses, uh, green accountants. Everybody has a, a role in how we can make our economy more attuned to what's happening to us. And climate change is looming over e everything coming up. And everybody needs to look, make, take a focus really on how they can improve that short-term gain, which for years and years, has been what has driven our economy. We want to make the, uh, the returns right now. And unfortunately, we need to look a little further ahead at what's looming over us. And that's the climate change, the, that blanket of pollution that's covering the earth. We need to deal with that because it's gonna smother 
all of our economic gains. And so the short-term gains, if they make that pollution blanket worse, uh, we're going to have to pay for that in a few years. And so we've we've settled on 2050 as, as the deadline uh, to make sure we've made those changes by then. But we really can't wait that long. We need to start making the changes now so that by 2050, we, we are prepared uh, to, to have improved the climate by that time so that it doesn't hit us as hard as the scientists are afraid it's going to. You know, and you're right. It can't just be that it's focused on certain careers. It has to be a focus on all of yours. We're going to transition a little bit. I know we could probably have a deep conversation just about that and how everybody needs to get involved and how and the different ways that everybody can start doing that in their own careers. But Elisa, you mentioned some of the initiatives, some of the, some of the things that, that you guys focus through your office. Water quality uh, and water man management was one of them. I want to focus on that and I want to I want to start you know talking about the different things that Howard County is doing to make sure that our quality of water is safe, that it's clean, that we have good water here in Howard County. And this might, um, for some people, maybe is it's a new concept. Maybe they're like, what are you talking about? Um, quality of water. Um, but we just have to look to the other side of our country and we, we can see that that is a real issue um, that we need to start paying attention to. So help us unpack this a little bit. Help us understand a little bit of what Howard County is doing to keep clean water available to everyone. Okay, sure. Yeah. I mean, in our water programs, we're, we kind of have it split into two. We have drinking water and then we have storm water. So in drinking water, uh, we're very fortunate in the mid-Atlantic region that we don't have those drought situations. We are in pretty good shape with our water so far. Um, one threat that is becoming coming more and more on our radar to our drinking water is actually road salt. Um, salt? <sighs> If you're, if your drinking water gets too salty, um, there's no turning back. So it's really important to think about the, all the salt you're putting down on roads. Um, Howard County has a lot of projects to go away from the traditional rock salt that we put on the roads and move towards what they call a brine. So it's more of a liquid and you'll see the stripes and you don't see the rocks bouncing every all over the place of the salt because those salts end up in the streams and eventually end up in somebody's, can end up in somebody's drinking water. Um, I spend, and it's also an issue with people who have wells. Um, it's, a, it's a bigger issue for them if you're not on the public water. So that's a whole issue. So if you're at home and it's winter time and you feel like, oh, it might, it might snow, it might get icy. Um, the ice bag says I should throw this all over my sidewalks. Well, let's think about that first and think about what you're really doing because that salt is going to wash off uh, right into the stream. So that brings me to storm water. Storm water means when the rainwater comes down, it runs over all kinds of surfaces. It runs over parking lots, it runs over roofs. And we have what we say quality and quantity. So in quantity, we're talking about impervious services. So it, water just rushing off into the streams and causing erosion and bringing all the pollutants down. And then we're also talking about the quality of it, those pollutants and where they're ending up. Um, when the water goes into those storm drains, it isn't getting treated. It's going out to streams, the rivers, and the bay. So we're really working hard to, to work on both of those water programs, the drinking water and the storm water. And I can go on and on about that. So just tell me which parts you're interested in, if any. Well, you know, it's, it's yes, I, I, thanks for, for bringing that awareness because um, I think we're all guilty of this, right? It's it's so easy to get a bag and, and of the salt and just... I mean, prepare, that's, we, I, I think that a lot of us like to be prepared for, you know, issues like that. And, and if we have to go to work the next morning, you want it, that's, that's, that's what a lot of us do. We, we put a little salt so that we have, we don't have to plow so much in the morning and, and dig ourselves out of the snow. So what are more sustainable ways? Because that's a big adjustment. And I think that's, a, that's a big deal. If, if we are directly affecting the quality of our water um, in the winter through what through our actions, you know, how can we make that better? How can we make that so that it's taking care of our need, right? Because we need to be able to get out in the morning. We we don't mm -hmm. I don't like dealing with the snow. I love the snow. It's really pretty, but I don't like 
right. <laughs> to right. deal with it right after it has fallen on the ground. And that's why, you know, the salt makes a lot of sense. Um, so what's a better way um, that we can prepare ourselves or just be ready to tackle the snow when it actually does fall here in, 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 in Harry County? Mm-hmm. Right. Well, well I, I would say definitely. Oh, go ahead, Bob. Go ahead. You know more about it. Oh, okay. No, you go. I, I was going to go back to the, the economy. We're, we're so wanting to take that short-term gain. And so we want to save ourselves a few minutes uh, by spreading the salt everywhere, not, not thinking about how that's all going to work down and affect the plants that are down along our streams. And eventually it's going to soak into our groundwater. So we'll be drinking it and then it'll flow down into the Chesapeake Bay and change the ecosystem down there and change the fish uh, and shellfish that we're eating from the Chesapeake Bay. So it's all going to be coming back to us, but we did save us a few minutes in the morning. So things like that our parents I'm guilty did, of this. Uh, put, put it, putting on snow boots, okay? Uh, people used to have snow tires. They could run on a little bit of, of snow and ice, but now we, we're going to save that little bit of time and just wipe the snow out by spreading the salt on it. So the county's efforts to use the brine reduces the amount of salt that they have to spread. And we can all think about things like that, that we can try and cut down on the amount of salt they're spreading into our environment. And there's safer types of salt or safer types of ice melter uh, that can be spread, which do less damage, but of course they cost a little bit more. And so it's, it's back, back to the economy in order to save us a few cents or save a few minutes time. And we've had this yeah, conversation that's interesting before. Yeah, um, perspective. But I mean, I would even go further to say that I think some of these things are just habits or some things that our parents did. And so we do them the same. I, I don't use any salt and not for any environmental reasons. I've just never done it. I come from New York. I come from a, a colder mm. climate and, and we just didn't do it. Um, salt isn't really actually effective on snow. Um, snow, you know, you're going to have to shovel it anyway to get to your car. The, the salt is really... I, I feel like it's just, it's overused and more of a habit than something that's effective. That's really interesting. Thanks for bringing that up. Because like I said, I'm yeah. very guilty of this. Very, very guilty of this. And so it, this is this is going to take some retraining and, you know, just really right. thinking more about the environment. And we've had this conversation before, Bob, right, where we are looking for that um, instant saving. We're looking for the, the, the ways that I can have that almost like instant gratification, but what we need to start thinking is about, okay, the impact that this has midterm and long-term. Let's talk about HCC and, and you know, that um, the way that HCC also looks at, at, at water and clean water and water sustainability here in the college. Some of the efforts, some of the things that we are doing here to also make sure that we are, um, you know, following the county's steps, but at the same time also, keeping I think I think that we are leaders um, here in the county and, and I'm gonna say the state when it comes to sustainable efforts so tell us a little bit of what we're doing here at ATC Bob we we do try to be and we divide it into two parts like Alyssa said there's the drinking water and uh, we have replaced almost all of our drinking water fountains uh, with bottle uh, filling stations and these have the advantage of they have a filter that removes the chlorine and other preservatives from the water at the very last minute before you drink it. And so we'd rather people use the fresh water that's supplied by Howard County and it's prize winning water. We have one of the best water systems uh, in the state and in the, in the country. And uh, you can see the test results. They test it every year and uh, we always come out uh, in, you know, at the top of the, top of the list in terms of our water quality. So we really need to be drinking that water that comes out of our freshwater system. Uh, rather than trying to buy the uh, bottle that's uh, the plastic bottles that have the water in them, because you don't know where, where they got that water from. And they removed the chlorine uh, before they, they put it into the bottle. And from there on, that water can be contaminated. So the water quality in those water bottles is always a little bit suspect in my mind, particularly those large water coolers that uh, people have in offices and such. So we've been replacing them around the campus with the water bottle filling stations, which uh, the water is treated at the uh, county, and then we remove those treatments at the very last minute before you drink it. So you get the best tasting 
and the uh, freshest water uh, coming coming out of those coolers. Now we also work a lot on the storm water, okay, trying to make sure that the storm water doesn't cause floods okay, downstream from us. And for the longest time, when people build buildings and anything, their only uh, thought was to get rid of the water, okay, to dig a ditch or a pond and just give it somewhere to go that wasn't where we wanted to put a building. But nowadays we're putting in rain gardens, conservation plantings, and all sorts of techniques to make the water stay on site and then be filtered by the earth and go down and replenish our groundwater. So we have more fresh water uh, coming along. Um, we'd have lots of those techniques uh, demonstrated on campus and we'll do, be doing a lot more uh, in, the, in the future. The turf grass uh, that is everywhere, you don't really think about that applying to water, but turf grass doesn't allow the storm water to soak in, it just runs off. And as the water runs off, it takes all the pesticides and uh, herbicides and fertilizers that we've put on that turf grass to make it look nice and pretty. And it washes it all into the streams and down toward the Chesapeake Bay. So we keep, keep an eye on that as well and trying to remove turf grass. And this is our long-term goal to remove turf grass anywhere where it's just growing to look green and we're putting flowers and bushes and other things that are even more attractive in those places. But we do need turf grass in areas where we have sports activities and uh, safe places to walk alongside our, our roadways. So there is a need for turf grass, but we don't need nearly as much uh, as people grow normally. And uh, typically when you build a building uh, in the past, everybody has just surrounded it with lawn. And so all the water just runs off and taking all the bad things away with it at the time. So we're trying to do much more creative ways of making it look more attractive uh, with native plantings and stuff, which will soak up and use that water as well as pulling carbon out of the atmosphere. And so it's a, it's a long-term plan, but we're moving ahead on it steadily, particularly when we put in a new building. Uh, we follow the lead requirements uh, that require that 40% of the rain that falls on that building's area has to stay in the area and be absorbed into the ground. And so this is where we get a lot of conservation and uh, rain garden plantings being developed. And the, the county has several programs going on that have helped us with this. They even have one called the Turf to Trees uh, program, where they'll actually give landowners uh, trees uh, if they will agree to maintain them in areas that are currently turf. So the, the whole county is working on this and we're, we're the, this college is, is uh, an active member in participating with that. Elisa, tell us a little bit more about, you know, this idea of planting trees and why we want, you know, the buyout of the community and, and, and why do we want to plant trees in, in Howard County? What, what does that do for our county? Okay, how much time do you have? Because this is a, this is a topic that's very close to my heart, as Bob knows. Um, if you want to do one thing to help the environment, plant a tree. Man, that's very impactful. I mean, to air quality. Where this is where we get the oxygen. Trees filter pollutants out for us. They create shade for us. They are homes to animals. They um, sequester carbon and sequester is a fancy word for pulling the carbon out of the air and locking it down so it's not in the atmosphere. And not only do the trees do that, I thought, oh yeah, they make their wood and that's the carbon that they sequester. No, it's even more than that through the roots. The roots is its own ecosystem of amazing microbes. And those microbes are uh, using up carbon in the sugars that they eat to process and the, the tree brings it down to them. It's an amazing, inspiring, beautiful, beautiful thing. I mean, the trees are great for stopping erosion. They are there for us for beauty. I mean, and, and not to mention wood products. So gosh, if you can really do one thing in, in your life, plant some trees. Um, yesterday, we had a very exciting day over here at Sustainability we, uh, and Recreation and Parks is a great partner and a, the lead on our uh, tree giveaway. Yesterday, um, Howard County at Residence reserved 2,000 trees in about two hours. I mean, there was such a hunger wow. for these trees. It was amazing. So we're giving away these gorgeous trees and people are going to plant them at their homes and they just want more and more. And I'm, I'm really inspired by that. So 
yesterday was a big day around here in terms of tree planting, but in every day, our Recreation and Parks Department is doing conservation plantings. They're maintaining forests. Um, you know, we want to plant all the new trees we can, especially to fight climate change. But, um, you know, we want to preserve the forest that we have because that's even more important. So um, I could go on and on and on about trees, but um, yeah, and I'm really inspired for the next generation on several of the topics that we've touched on because, you know, planting trees is awesome and that will be great for their future. I'm, I'm so really inspired about how much the kids do use water fountains, especially the awesome ones that you have at HCC. I mean, I love it how everybody, you know, carries around a swell. I mean, that, that wasn't a thing when I was growing up. So I think this next generation really has so much potential to have an impact, you know, do what needs to be done. Um, they're really, they're really there for it, you know, for, you know, fighting climate change. And I'm, and I'm so glad to see it. It's so easy to get discouraged, but, you know, Bob and I and everyone, we try to stay positive and just work at it every day. You know, we're really trying for you. We really want to make things better. And I think you guys are the ones who are leading the new generation, really bringing this awareness to them. And that's why they, you know, they're, they have this understanding and this deep sense of we really do need to care about our planet, whereas I've only started hearing of it as an adult. So and it's right. through people like yourself. So so definitely the impact that you guys are making is what's leading the new generation for sure. But, you know, it sounds like we missed out on the opportunity to get free trees here at Howard County just now. So that this doesn't happen again and somebody maybe who's watching or listening says, oh, I, I really would like to get more information on that. Or if there's opportunities to plant trees that are upcoming, which I know Howard County offers those opportunities, where can we find information? Where can we stay on top of things so that we don't miss out on uh, free tree day, as I'm going to call it? Right. Great. Yeah, absolutely. I would recommend following Live Green Howard. LiveGreenHoward.com is the website. And if you go there, you'll get a pop up immediately that will ask you to join the email list. And email is a little bit old school, I know, but is super effective. Um, we get so much of our interest from email. And I think the overwhelming demand for the trees yesterday was really in, in part because of just sending out an email through constant contact. Um, also, you can follow Live Green Howard on Facebook, Twitter, and we are close to getting our Instagram going again. So yes, live Green Howard, live Green Howard. This, if you could just Google it, uh, follow us, you will hear about all these interesting things. Um, the next tree thing we'll have coming up, we'll have uh, Recreation and Parks, we'll have a, a volunteer day where you can come and, and, um, and plant trees out at a county uh, park. Um, we're also, Bob and I are also involved in the forestry board. Forestry board has some opportunities if you have tree, if students have tree planting projects that they would like to be uh, funded, uh, small scale projects up to a thousand dollars, they should check out the Forest Howard County Forestry Board website, or you can contact me through Live Green Howard. But um, I would say, yeah, if you, there's so much great information on uh, websites can be a little old school too, but there's so much great information on Live Green Howard, and you can contact us through there as well. And for our students here, Bob, um, you know, what's one place and the best place where they can contact you? Maybe they want to come have a conversation um, and just find out how they can be more involved and start making an impact here at HEC. Well, they can start with our website, you know, it's howardcc.edu backslash green and get contact information. And some programs are explained there. We also have a newsletter that goes out from the green team. And if you'll send me an email, we'll m make sure that you get connected to that. My email is safetybob at howardcc.edu. Uh, so please let, let me know and we'll get you hooked up into our monthly newsletter. Uh, we also get a lot of our articles for that newsletter from the Live Green uh, website. And so we're tuned into that as well. And also in the local communities, wherever you live in Howard County, there are environmental organizations that do all sorts of things, including tree plantings and things like uh, uh, plant swaps, uh, particularly in the fall, these are coming along where people that have a large number of native plants uh, want to give them away to good homes. And these are mm. plants, since they're native, they've adapted and evolved uh, to grow in our environment. So you know that they're going to do well and don't require a lot of fertilizer and pesticides and other sort of things. 
that the non-native plants that are mostly sold at the uh, the garden stores um, do require a lot more effort uh, to maintain and keep going. So we really like people to do the the native plants. And so look into your local neighborhoods. I know in downtown Columbia, the Howard Hughes uh, Corporation has tree giveaways several times a year that they promote. So if you can go onto their website, uh, each of the villages in Columbia uh, has a newsletter where they uh, you know, publicize the activities that they have. And a large number of those are based around the environment. Uh, things like pick, picking up trash, removing invasive species, uh, and planting trees and plants along the roadside. And plus they have their own giveaways. So I encourage you just to, to look around you and make, make those connections wherever you live. And of course, here on campus, if you're going to school here. Many ways to connect, many ways that you can get involved. And, um, you know, we we can't finish our conversation quite yet because we haven't talked about agriculture. And I know that that's another focus here at your office, Elisa. So I, I, I'd love to just, you know, for you to just explain to us how, the part that agriculture plays and, and how the Office of Sustainability in Howard County helps the agricultural world um, to make sure that, that we continue to be sustainable and that... Um, you know, we continue to have food available to us. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Power County has such a rich agro agricultural history and it's such a part of our culture. Um, we, our office in particular has uh, one of our people, James Zoller, who specializes in agriculture and he's a liaison between the agricultural community and others. So recent projects that we've had is to, to um, really kind of drill down on the um, what you what kind of solar you can do on agricultural project. It can be a controversial topic, but I really feel so proud of James and other people in our office for really doing really good government on this because it's, it was a collaborative process to get together with the agricultural committee, the um, agriculture board, uh, the solar experts to really figure out what makes sense on an agricultural property to add solar. So. It, so proud of that whole process for, for clarifying the rules so that these farms can have the economic benefit of having solar, but not not um, infringing too much on their on agricultural preservation. So there's that. Uh, we're also really proud of a program called the Roving Radish. And this is where um, we work with local farmers to buy uh, the proteins and the vegetables from them and create meal kits. So if you're familiar with like some of the larger companies that will send mail um, meal kits to your home. This is a, a program where you sign up, you know, can choose the meal. You've got some local food in there. You've got a healthy recipe so you can learn some new recipes and support the local agriculture at the same time. It's called Roving Radish. You can either look up rovingradish.com, which is even though it's a government thing, all of our extensions are .com. I don't know why. Um, Roving Radish is a fantastic project and um, you know, we're just doing our best to reach out to agriculture on a third topic, which is what I like to call drawdown. Well, that's what it's called, but I like, to, I'm a big fan of drawdown, which means like, not only do we have to cut our uh, consumption of things of carbon and other greenhouse gases, we need to really work on drawing it out of the atmosphere. Like we were talking about with trees and roots and native plants. Another big, big way you can do that is with soil and with agriculture. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we can get there. Uh, Maryland State is working on it. Some of the federal agencies are working on it, but we want to work out it here in Howard County too, where we really work on agricultural soils to make them even better, even healthier, and a, a, what we call a carbon sink. So that's a lot, but so we've got a lot going on in all kinds of areas. And I've had conversations before uh, about the Robin Radish. I know that that's one of our partners and was a crucial partner during, you know, the pandemic here at HCC. It's a great nice. program. I'm I'm honestly in the process of, and it has taken, you know, and this is this is the thing that that I want all of our viewers and our listeners to really be aware of. This, I've I've been having these conversations uh, with Bob for some time, and it has brought some awareness. I wasn't ready or maybe I didn't know exactly how to take some steps, right? And I'm just now in the process where I've um, purposely not gone to the store yet to buy my food because I want to make that switch. 
I want to start doing programs like the uh, the, the Robin Radish and, and buying local produce um, because I am now more invested and I, I understand more. So if you're listening, if you're watching and you're like me, right, where you're like, I really want to get involved, but I don't know how to do this. Just continue to be part of this conversations. Just continue to read about this. Just continue to get involved in small ways. Just continue to be present. Even if you don't do anything today, I promise you, you're going to get to the point where I am right now, where is I'm, I'm actively looking and I'm actively visiting pages and websites. I haven't placed the order yet. Um, because it's a new thing and I'm not sure how it's going to work out, but it can be done. And, and I encourage you and I challenge you to maybe join me and, and, you know, just like I said, keep having these conversations, keep informing yourself about the impact that we have um, with the plants that we plant in our house, with the food that we consume, where it comes from, how we can get it and everything else that we've talked about today with Elisa and Bob. Bob, I know here at HEC, um, you know, agriculture and, and having programs through that is not new. We have a garden, but I would love for you to really just bring it all together and, and, and remind everybody of everything that we continue to do here at HEC to bring that piece of agriculture here in campus. Wow. Uh, it, it's, it really is part of our history. Almost all of this area was originally farmland. Okay? And we, we've slowly but surely, actually quite rapidly, in the case of Columbia, we've occupied the land uh, with with buildings and roads and other things, and we're forcing the agriculture further and further to the west and making it harder and harder for the farm economy uh, to continue it to exist. Well, we all need to follow the example of the local restaurants, not the chains, the local ones, who buy the local food because it tastes better and it, it's fresher. And so, if it doesn't have to be preserved or if it doesn't have to travel on an airplane or a truck to get here, its carbon footprint is much lower. So our uh, cafeteria here on campus uh, pursues almost all lo local food uh, because of the quality of it and, and the freshness and of course the taste, Pe people like it more. Um, we have here on campus a food pantry uh, garden where we grow food, fresh food, uh, to give away in our food pantry, which serves our students uh, who have, you know, food, have difficulty purchasing uh, enough food. So we make sure that we give them the access to fresh uh, vegetables and other produce. And we also include with it uh, menus that are developed uh, by our culinary department so that people can learn how to cook uh, that food. We, we also have a uh, you pick garden. Uh, run by the transitions program, where people are free to stop by and just pick some vegetables themselves. And this is over by the athletic facility. Um, we have a uh, se several different areas where we're trying to grow na native fruits and, and vegetables, okay, right right here on the campus. And of course, this has had a, a hard time with no one being here last year, so things have gotten a little overgrown. So we're hoping to restore that and make it an active program very soon. But we all really need, to, like I say, like the local restaurants, we need to look for that local food and support our local farmers. The farmers markets uh, are, are a great way to do that. And so if you can figure out the schedule in your neighborhood where to stop by that farmers market and buy that stuff that's the, the freshest it can be, and it's healthier for you, it'll taste better. and. Uh, Again, short term with the economy, it might cost a few cents more, but it's worth it if it keeps you healthier and if it tastes better. So please, please look for the local farm produce. Absolutely. And like I said, it might be, you may not know where to go. It might be a little intimidating. You know, the website that um, Live Green, Howard, that's a good place to start. That's where I'm starting. Robin Radish is a great program. I'm also learning more about that too. And there's a lot more out there to look for. So um, just do your reading. Just do, you know, you do your research and, 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 and I promise you, you're going to get there. You're going to get to the point where you're, you're going to be so excited. You just can't wait to get involved in a program like that. We only have about five minutes left here in our conversation and we've covered a lot of information. We've given a lot of different tips, you know, depending on what we were talking about, right? Like water um, quality. We've talked about um, agriculture. We've talked about many things. So I'd like to just wrap our conversation up because 
maybe it's too much. Maybe um, information can get lost. I mean, it's been an hour conversation. So, Elisa, if there was one thing, and Bob, the same question goes for you after Elisa gives us her answer, but if there was one thing um, that you want to make sure that people take with them today from this conversation, uh, it could be an action item, right? Or it could be just uh, um, a, a thought, or it could be a suggestion, something. If there was one thing that you want to make sure that they take away from our conversation today, what is that thing? Oh boy, that's a tough one. Um, gosh, there's just so much. And I feel like you can get overwhelmed and, and, and too many things to think about can lead to just doing nothing. So just find that one thing that you want to do this week, this month, this year, it can be an easy thing. Um, I think we have so much potential to do with just our personal choices in our food. I mean, there's so much food waste, food can be composted. So I would say think about your food. I mean, it's great if people want to go vegan or vegetarian to cut down on some environmental issues, but you know what, what if seven people just did one day a week, you know, think about a meatless Monday. So, you know, since we kind of tapered off with food, I would, I'll, I'll leave you with that one thing is, is think about your food. Think about that one day that maybe you want to be meatless or that one day that you want to shop at the farmer's market because uh, it's kind of fun and there's so many of them. And uh, I'll, I'll leave you with that. Just, you know, just, 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 just start with one thing and it'll lead to the next and we'll get there. I really love I, that. I'd and like Bob, you, yours think, can't be yeah. food. Oh, yours okay. can't be around food. I'm sorry. I'm going to no, challenge okay. you. That's going to be somewhere else. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm going to go to water bottles. And uh, anything you can do not to throw away something. Okay. Mm -hmm. think, think about making a contribution, an effort. And if you can only put in 10 seconds a day, that's fine. Do something that uses 10 seconds more of your time, such as filling up your water bottle. And maybe you'll work yourself up to taking 30 seconds. Okay? And, and you'll do something that takes a little more effort. So you'll, you'll put things into the recycling bin, or you'll choose not to buy the plastic bottle, but to reuse your bottle. And each, each week or each month or whatever, increase the amount of time that you're willing to put into it. And don't try and take those shortcuts. Okay? Spend a little more effort and part of that time needs to be just looking around you and seeing what exists in the world around us and the environment. And quite often you'll see stuff that you don't know what it is that you never looked at before. You'll see a plant and we just, oh, it's a plant. Well, why not take a picture of it and look it up and see what that plant is and see what it can do for you or against you. And maybe you'll say, well, that's not a native plant. I should replace that with another plant. And pretty soon you've used up that 30 seconds. And maybe it's time to spend a few more seconds caring about the environment. It really comes back to mindfulness. I think both of your um, suggestions come back to that, right? Look at look at what you're eating. Um, if you, if you want to support just having one day where you don't have meat, right? That's an easy thing to do. That's, um, that's an, something that we can do today. Maybe one meal, maybe, maybe you're like, oh, wait, 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 I, I, I can't do that for a full day. Perfect. Start with one meal, right? One meal on Monday, then you go and you add, okay, I'm going to continue to do one vegetarian meal Monday, Tuesday. Maybe that's easier for you, right? Or, or like like um, Bob said, you know, just those extra 10 seconds. And then one more thing that you can do is go to livegreenhoward.com and just connect with that. Find them on Facebook. Um, connect with um, Bob so that you can get that email that they're sending out so that you can have these ideas. Maybe there's other ideas. There's other things that you care about that you want to connect that we didn't have an opportunity to talk about today. Well, there's these places, there's these people, there's these organizations out there doing all of this work. They want you to connect. They want to connect with you. So thank you so much, Alisa. Thank you so much, Bob. I really appreciate you coming in today. Share this space, share this time with me, inspiring us all to really have that mindful um, way of living so that we can, like you said, Alisa, take care of our planet so that our planet can continue to take care of us. I really appreciate you both. Uh, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. 
Absolutely. And thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for watching. If you're watching this on Facebook, please share this with your friends and your family. Make sure to follow us. HowardCC.edu is also a really great resource where you can find more information about the college, about everything that we are doing, and you can connect with us and stay in tune with everything that's happening. Dragon Digital Radio on Facebook, Instagram, and, um, you know, that's it for me today. Have a wonderful day. I hope this has inspired you in some way. Until next time, I am Cris Oviedo.